Now remember there is still one more thing that I haven't incorporated into the model and that is the fact that uh, for the oven station I'm going to have different processing times for my uh, customers. In other words remember that uh, based on the current operating policy of the restaurant we, we need to maintain first in first out throughout the system. So basically we route all of the customers to the oven uh, station. However, we know that for those people that will get cold sandwiches, the processing time on the oven station is going to be zero. So I, he, uh, so I need a mechanism here to basically uh, have different processing times uh, based on uh, the percentages that I'm given in the problem statement. So basically I want uh, a zero processing time for 30% of my customers that get get that get cold sandwiches and for the re, uh, remaining 70% of the customers I want uh, this expression to be the uh, processing time. So in order to do that I'm going to go to uh, Simio expression builder and uh, I'm going to type random and then hit period to get to the sub menu and in the sub menu you will see that we have a list of different probability distributions that we can use and in fact one of these probability distributions is a discrete probability distribution and if you hover the mouse on it you can read the description that says uh, the discrete distribution is an empirical distribution defined by a set of value and cumulative probability pairs that define a stepwise linear cumulative distribution function for a discrete random variable. And this is exactly what I need. So I'm going to double click on the discrete uh, 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 probability uh, distribution. So the first thing that I need to put is the first value, which is zero processing time. And I know that I want this to be uh, for 30% of my customers. So uh, the second variable here will be, uh, or the second parameter will be 0.3 and for the uh, remaining 70% I want it to be random uh, triangular with parameters um, basically half a minute, uh, one minute and 1.5 minutes and I know that uh, the rest of my customers will have this uh, value associated with them, so I'm just going to put one. So basically this, uh, this way um, I can guarantee that for 30% uh, of my customers randomly I will have a processing time of zero and for the remaining 70% I will have this uh, triangular distribution for the processing time. So now in order to uh, verify that this is working, I can basically run my model and look at the model and how it runs. So, so, um, so for some of the uh, customers, I expect them to basically uh, skip the oven station in zero processing time and go to uh, the veggies and cashier and drink. But uh, since this is hard to capture by just looking at the model run, uh, an alternative way to make sure that this is actually working is to use uh, the step function or the step mode uh, as you run the model. So uh, when you every time you hit the step uh, button right here, uh, the model jumps to the next event that is going to be processed in your uh, simulation model. So um, I keep... Uh, clicking on step until my entity arrives at uh, or enters the processing station of the oven station and I will then look at uh, the current time and uh, what I would like to see is that for roughly 30 percent of the customers I want them to um, exit the processing station of the oven station in zero simulation time. So um, let's see what happens to uh, the first entity. So the current time is 12 uh, 0, 1, uh, 33. So I'm going to hit uh, step and as you can see the simulation time is uh, changing uh, or evolving. That means basically this entity 
um, had some processing time associated with it, which was non-zero. So I'm going to uh, continue running my model till my second entity arrives. And my second entity uh, will now go to uh, uh, the oven station if I continue running my model. And this is right here. So now the current time is 12 uh, 0423 and um, I continue clicking on um, step button and as you can see uh, in zero simulation time my second entity exited the uh, processing station of the op and so I'm still at 120423 uh, uh, so uh, I can continue this process and uh, verify that my uh, discrete probability distribution that I have used for my processing time on the oven is working but uh, based on what we just uh, saw uh, for the first entity uh, it looks like that we sampled from the triangular distribution while for the second entity we had a zero processing time so I want you to continue running your model in the step mode uh, for several other entities and verify that your uh, processing time is actually working correctly so in order to further verify my model, I would like to compare it to an analytical model that I have developed. So um, here is my uh, static queuing network analysis and where I have estimated uh, utilizations of my servers and number and system and time and system at steady state. So what I would like to do is to run my model and compare these values together. So I'm going to um, increase the run length to uh, 100 hours and I'm going to run my model in the fast forward mode and then go to my results and when I look at my number in system and time in system I'm getting 5.17 and uh, let me change the units to minutes here so 5.17 for number in system and uh, average time in system 9.44 and when I compare these values to my uh, static model, you will see that the values I get from my simulation model are much lower than my expected values. This difference is due to a couple of reasons. First of all, in my queuing model, uh, I'm assuming that all processing times are exponentially distributed, which is not the case in my simulation model. Um, secondly, my queuing model assumes that everybody has the same processing time in the oven station so basically my queuing model ignores cold customers and uh, finally we know that uh, from our simulation um, interactive run uh, we're only getting one observation of of these random variables that we're trying to measure so in order to get um, a better estimate we need to replicate our model uh, to get multiple observations so now I'm going to um, make these changes or basically uh, modify my uh, simulation model in order to make it uh, correspond to my analytical model and uh, before I do it I would like to save this model and I would like to uh, call it current policy and now um, uh, I'm going to uh, change basically all my processing time distributions to exponential and also um, I'm going to remove the discrete empirical uh, processing time I have for my oven session so everybody will have the same exponential distribution in my verification model for the oven station as well. So here is my modified model for my verification analysis. As you can see, I have changed all my processing times to exponential distribution with the same means. And of course, um, for the oven station, I have also removed the, uh, the empirical distribution that I had. So now everybody is treated uh, exactly the same on the oven station, uh, similar to my analytical um, static model. So now, uh, in order to replicate our model, I'm going to uh, project home and create a new experiment. And I'm simply going to run my model uh, for 10 replications and look at the results. So now the run is complete. I can uh, go to my pivot grid and compa compare my uh, values. So let me uh, filter out uh, the values that I don't need real quick. So I need the average, average in minutes and percent values. 
and of course uh, the only um, uh, data items that I need uh, are basically number and uh, number and system uh, scheduled utilization and time and system so now um, I have filtered my pivot grid to uh, down to the uh, performance measures that I'm interested in so now I can go ahead and compare my values with my uh, basically um, analytical model so as you can see from my number in uh, system I'm getting 11.11 .11, uh, while I expect to see 11.4 um, uh, 42 and for uh, the timing system I'm getting 21.06 uh, while I'm uh, expecting to see a little higher value of 21.42 so um, as you can see, it seems that our values from the simulation models, although our, our scheduled utilizations uh, seem to be uh, close to, to, to our expectations, but our time and system and number and system seems to be lower than what we expect them to be. And that's uh, mainly due to the fact that when we start our model, uh, we have an empty system. So we started with zero number in system while at steady state, uh, we expect to see um, 11.42 uh, entities in the system. And also, uh, for the first few entities, since we start with an empty system, uh, we don't really expect them to wait in, um, in, the, in any lines in order to get processed. So for these entities, we expect their uh, time and system to be much lower than what we typically see in, um, at steady state. So in order to uh, solve this um, issue, uh, without getting into the theoretical and technical details, what we need is basically uh, something we call warmer period. So uh, what I'm going to do is run my model for 300 hours and I'm going to add 100 hours of warmer period. So what the warmer period does, it basically um, removes or deletes the statistics that we collect during the first 100 hours of simulation run. Um, so we hope that uh, this would help us remove some of this initial bias that we have in our uh, results. So now when I uh, look at my, let me reset and run my model, uh, run my experiment again. So now um, I can go to my uh, pivot grid and compare my values. And now, um, as you can see, I'm getting 11.8. Um, uh, instead of 11.4 and I'm getting 21.9 um, instead of 21.42 but uh, when, when I look at the half fit it seems that all my expected values fall within my confidence intervals so now I have collected some evidence that my model is implemented correctly uh, and of course if I would like to verify my model um, even more I could either uh, increase my number of replications to get more observations of my uh, random variables. Um, alternatively, I could also increase my run length to hopefully get closer to steady state. And um, I could also increase my warmer period to reduce the impact of the initial transient bias on my simulation outputs.